good morning and welcome to our service of spiritual communion. Today is the 19th of April when the church remembers St Alphage, who was a martyr who died in 1012 on this day. Of course, for St Alphage Church in this parish, it is our patronal festival and I'm very sorry that we can't be in church today celebrating it. I hope that what we offer you today will go some way towards compensating for that. Stephen Linstead is going to give the reflection this morning, so I will leave him to say more about St Alphage. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia!
pray our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to our prayers of penitence when we come to the Lord asking for forgiveness for the things that we wish we had done in the past week and which we didn't do and for those regrets we have. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, who raised up your servant Alfred to be a pastor of your people, and gave him grace to suffer for justice and true religion. Grant that we who celebrate his martyrdom may know the power of the risen Christ in our hearts and share his peace in lives offered to your service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. From today's Gospel, those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. We live in troubled times. Not since the epidemic in 1918 has been a pestilence as virulent and widespread as the one we currently face. We pray earnestly that it may soon pass and hold deeply in our prayers all who are suffering from it in whatever manner. But we have to accept that times of deep trouble have occurred in the past, and today we remember such an event. 
the period of the renewed Viking raids upon England, which started in the first decade of the second millennium, must have seemed a body blow to all those who had come to believe that such events were a thing of the past. And the raiders certainly lived up to their fearful reputation. They left a trail of robbery, death and destruction in their path, sparing neither the weak nor the strong. Among those who suffered was Archbishop Alfage, taken captive after the sack of Canterbury, but who enraged his captors when, out of consideration for his impoverished flock, he forbade the raising of a ransom. And so, at Greenwich, on April the 19th, 1012, the terrible events unfolded. The warriors, inebriated by strong wine they had stolen, took out on him their frustration at his resistance. They started to pelt him with ox bones from their feast, and when he was clearly dying, one of their number dispatched the old man with an axe, a blow to the head. As with the murder of Thomas Becket the following century, a wave of revulsion arose at the killing of the Archbishop. By his death, Alfred had become a national hero. His body was taken to St Paul's Minster in London, where it remained buried for some years. Later, when the Danish King Knut became a King of England, he wanted to reconcile Saxons and Danes, and as a token of his goodwill in 1023, allowed the remains of Alfage to be taken to Canterbury Cathedral, where his shrine remained venerated and a place of pilgrimage until the Reformation. So what is the relevance of St Alfage for Christians today? Well, we can find an answer in the reasons that a century later Anselm gave for persuading Archbishop Lanfranc to keep Alfage in the calendar of saints. Lanfranc did not doubt Alfage's holiness, but questioned whether he was really a martyr, as he had not been killed specifically on account of his faith. Anselm replied, however, that Alfage was a martyr for justice, as John the Baptist had been a martyr for truth. He who dies for justice dies for Christ. Lanfranc accepted the argument. Not merely was Alfage's name kept in the canon of saints by the Church of England, he was officially canonised by the Pope and thus revered universally. Indeed, the honour in which he was held went far beyond the Western Church. And so it is that we honour today the memory of one who suffered a cruel and unjust death in order to ensure that those who were within his care were not forced to impoverish themselves even further. We also remember him as someone who, in his death, was honoured not just by his own people, but by those who had killed him. So a pilgrimage to his shrine in Canterbury must for many have been an act of repentance, forgiveness and reconciliation. How many of us, I wonder, had those same thoughts in our minds as we made our way to Canterbury Cathedral during the millennium of the saint's martyrdom for our service of thanksgiving. Certainly it was a service of reconciliation between different denominations and it was deeply moving to see so many Christian traditions represented there. One of the remarkable things about Alfage is that the manner of his life and death have a timeless quality about them. Here was a Christian pastor who was so devoted to the welfare of those for whom he cared that he gave his life for them. He could easily have agreed that the ransom be raised. He could easily have secured his release by issuing a simple instruction, but he didn't. His love for his people was such that following our Lord's example, he was prepared to make the ultimate sacrifice. It was particularly poignant that Alfage suffered death so near to Easter Day. As the church of which he was the chief prelate was celebrating the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, so Alfage was put to the ultimate test and he did not fail it. For, as Jesus himself had done before him, so Alfage willingly and unflinchingly drank from the cup which was his destiny. His martyrdom reminds us that we are not the first generation to live in deeply troubled times, and we should be inspired by those who throughout the centuries have shown courage and concern for others at periods of great national adversity. 
So, as we honour his memory on this, his feast day, it is a good time to draw strength from his example of steadfastness and loving self-sacrifice on behalf of others. Surely a message in our present predicament and for the ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, who is our refuge and stronghold. In this litany, the response is, Lord, graciously hear us. For all who seek to combat hatred and injustice throughout the world, at risk of their own lives, that they may be inspired by the example of Alphage and all other martyrs to the faith, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the health and well-being of our nation at this troubled time, that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are sick from the coronavirus or from any other illness, and for those who care for them, remembering especially the medical profession, hospital chaplains and carers, many of whom are putting their own health at risk, in order to care for others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those providing other essential services at this time, remembering especially delivery drivers and shop staff, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the clergy and laity who are striving to provide pastoral care for those in need and to maintain Christian worship while churches are closed. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our homes and families, our schools and young people, and all in any kind of need or distress. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For a blessing on our local community, that our neighbourhoods may be places of trust and friendship where all are known and cared for. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have recently died, including those who have succumbed to the pandemic, for those who mourn the loss of loved ones, Lord hear us, Lord graciously hear us. And so we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ.
Peace to this house from God our Heavenly Father. Peace to this house from his Son who is our peace. Peace to this house from his Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We come to our act of spiritual communion. I invite you to keep a few moments of silence. Almighty God, in union with the faithful at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may ever be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate me from you. Let me live and die in your love. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, grant that as the hem of your garment touched in faith, healed the woman who could not touch your body, so the soul of your servant may be healed by faith in you, whom I cannot now sacramentally receive, through your tender mercy, who lives and reigns with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. We finish with the blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.